this Holy Trinity Russian Orthodox Church was in East Meadow, Long Island, was built in the 1920s. There's an interesting history about the church, how it was started by a group of emigres who came after the 1903 revolution. They were all farmers. And they came to Long Island, and they farmed potatoes and things like that. They had big farms. And they made some money, and they decided they to have services. They were very religious people. Well, they found this plot of land in East Meadow. They went ahead and bought it, built the church. And uh, the next day after it was consecrated, uh, they were given a lawsuit. And they said, well, what's, what's, what's that for? He says, well, you fellows built the church on the lot next to the one you bought. So now you've got to pay for it. And of course, the pressure is here. The, the responsible party was the man that headed up the, the church council, so to speak. Starosta, as they would call it in Russian. And Starosta would go around to all his friends all week long and say, make sure you come to church and put some money in the thing, because I've got to pay these lawyers, I've got to pay taxes, or blah, 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 this and that. And, and the two lawyers says, well, you know, they pass the plate around every Sunday, so let's, let's, this is pretty good money coming in. So let's, let's keep this thing going. And this kept on going for years. And they kept changing the name of the church with the name of the deed uh, until somebody finally realized that all the other churches, the Catholics, the Episcopalians, and the, so on around there, had names of saints or something like that. So they said, well, why don't we just make the deed out to the Virgin Mary? Uh, St. Mary's Church. And so they did. So for a period of time, the Holy Virgin Mary actually owned a piece of land on Long Island. <laughs> Deeded to her. <laughs> so can you imagine going through the courts and figure out who is she, who did she sign for, who signed for her, and stuff like that. So eventually they called my father in to help out. In the meantime, my father was involved in the church uh, in uh, Seacliff, Long Island. They had a Russian church there, well-established, running. So he really did not know about this group of farmers who started that church. And, uh, but they came to him and explained this. And uh, he listened. Interestingly enough, uh, he realized what had happened. And uh, he went to his friend, Roland Redmond, the Redmonds, who really financed him in this stable, and uh, a lawyer. And Roland got together with some of other lawyers and got things straightened out. Well, it took about five years to get a clean deed after all of these changes, including the Virgin Mary's deed, uh, through the courts to get a clean deed. But finally they did. I would say about 36 35, 36, they incorporated and they built that church. And it's been booming ever since. While this was going on, and my father became the starosta of the church as well for a number of years, and I was the altar boy. I was there for about four years as the altar boy. What we, what I felt is, uh, a respect for the name. We were treated uh, well, and in fact, the fact being no having being a nobility still today in Russia, or even when I go to the embassy uh, here, uh, and I'm very much involved with the Russian Cultural Center here. I feel that they respect me better than. 
others. I mean, there's just one little element, you know, a pleasantry. I met this lady that you just saw, and uh, she came from Garden City, Long Island. She was a good Episcopalian. So the question was, naturally, of weddings, where do we go? Well, one of my cousins did have a, a Russian Orthodox wedding in an Episcopal church. So I brought that point up. And that seemed to be quite happy. And uh, as a result, we did get married uh, in 1947, I guess it was, in uh, the Episcopal Church on, in Garden City, Long Island which was Anne's church at the time. And the choir from that East Middle Church came to sing at our wedding. So, so that was a, a thank you type gesture on their part. They were only about, you know, the Russian choirs are not very big, but they've got voices, booming voices. And uh, about six or eight of them and they filled that cathedral with sounds that the Episcopalians had never heard before. And we had the priest from New York come over and the dean of the cathedral so sort of gave us blessings. Uh, and I guess this is why we've been married 60 odd years now. <laughs> this was there uh, in 1963. They now, they own, actually, they own both lots now. So they went ahead and rebuilt the church to, to this size. They built a new church on the lot that they originally owned, and they destroyed the old church and made that a, I think they built a, uh, a rectory on that. So they've expanded. Uh, Ann and I were there for the, one of their anniversaries. I guess it must have been 75th anniversary and they had a big dinner and we were invited and uh, it was like all home week to see all these the, the kids I played with but my age in their 60s <laughs> and, and uh, they're doing great they're doing very very well actually I feel more Episcopalian now than I do Orthodox I mean as much as <clears throat> All three of our kids are Episcopalians. We go to the church for major, as a family, on major holidays, Christmas, and things of that nature. The religion has remained, but it's shifted a little bit. And as my mother always used to say, God is everywhere. As long as you follow the traditions and the rules and so on, the nomenclature you put to it is immaterial.